Okay, ready for a deep dive into a document that's about as provocative as they come. Yeah, this one's a doozy. You shared the report from Iron Mountain with us, and uh, let me tell you, it does not mince words. It really doesn't. It cuts straight to the heart of a question that's been bugging humanity since, well, forever, probably. Which is? Is peace even possible? Like, really possible? Even if it is. Yeah, even if it is possible. Yeah. Do we, deep down, even really want it? Whoa. Okay, so right off the bat, this report isn't messing around. Not even a little. And the whole setup, the way this report came to be, it's like something out of a conspiracy thriller. Right, like a secret society of intellectuals hold up in some. Oh, it gets better. Think luxury nuclear bunker. Hidden bunker dot check. And their mission to analyze what exactly? To analyze the potential downsides of a transition to peace. Okay, so a bunch of brilliant minds in a luxury bunker trying to figure out if peace is actually a bad idea. Basically. Mm -hmm. And their findings, let's just say they were controversial, to put it mildly. This report straight up suggests that lasting peace, while achievable, might be a bad thing for a stable society. That's mm -hmm. kind of a bombshell, isn't it? It's a big one. Their argument is that war, while obviously destructive and horrible, actually serves a bunch of hidden, vital functions in the world. Okay, so they're not saying war is good exactly, but... No, no, not good. <laughs> but essential. Like, yeah. it's practically woven into our social DNA. Mm -hmm. It underpins how our systems function, even in peacetime. So war isn't just about politics or land grabs. It's, like, fundamental to how our world works. Exactly. And the report from Iron Mountain argues that war, or at least the constant threat of it, has become so deeply ingrained in everything that trying to just remove it mm. could trigger all kinds of crazy, unpredictable, possibly disastrous consequences. And they have examples, right? Like specific ways that war or the threat of war is holding everything together. Tons of them. Think about defense spending, even in so-called peacetime. It's like this massive economic stimulus package. Right. But how does that... Well, they point to things like... Remember those stock market dips whenever there were those big peace talks a few years back? Yeah, vaguely. The report suggests that those aren't just coincidences, that on a global scale, military spending is propping up the entire system. You mean like a global military industrial complex? Kind of, but even bigger than that. They argue that it functions like this perverse Keynesian engine, stabilizing the economy in a way that nothing else seems to be able to do. Okay, so the economic implications are pretty wild, but it sounds like they're saying war's influence goes way beyond just money. Oh, absolutely. They get into how war affects political power too. The whole idea that regimes that can't fight often end up collapsing from within. So if a country can't wage war... They're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. The report argues that being able to fight legitimizes governments, enforces order, even helps maintain existing class structures. Whether we like it or not. Exactly. So the threat of war keeps people in line, both on the world stage and at home. That's a very simplified way of putting it, but yeah, that's one of their arguments. And, you know, it, it, it's not like it's completely untrue. Look at history. It's a pretty sobering thought. Like, what we consider normal in society yeah. might be more messed up than we realize. The report definitely doesn't shy away from the uncomfortable stuff. If anything, they're yeah. saying, hey, look, this is the reality, whether you want to admit it or not. And it's not just about economics and politics, is it? I seem to remember anything about... Sociology. Oh, yeah, the report dies into that, too. They claim that war... This is going to sound messed up, but they claim that war functions as a kind of social glue. Social glue, meaning... It brings people together. Yeah. Creates a sense of unity. I mean, I get it, the whole us versus them mentality, but still. Right, and they even talk about how it allows us to distance ourselves from the human cost of conflict. Like, they use those stark historical examples like uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Wow. Okay, so we're really getting into some ethically murky territory here. We are just getting started. Like, think about, you know, World War II, that spirit of unity, rationing, victory gardens, everyone working towards a common goal. Yeah, right, the greatest generation and all that. Exactly. The report argues that war, and this is obviously tragic, but it can create a level of social cohesion that's really hard to achieve any other way. Okay, but social cohesion isn't the only thing. This report goes even further. It suggests that historically, war has also been a pretty darn effective method of population control. Yeah, that's another really unsettling aspect of this whole thing. Throughout history, war has basically acted as this awful but arguably effective way to keep the population in check. And while that might seem less relevant today with 
you know, modern medicine and all. The report actually highlights how population growth combined with things like environmental damage could lead to some serious resource scarcity down the line. So even though we might not want to think about it, war has, in a really messed up way, been keeping things balanced. That's what they're saying. And it gets worse. They argue that war has also been the driving force behind a lot of cultural and scientific advancement as well. Wait, really? Explain that. Well, they have all these examples from throughout history, how the pressure of conflict basically forces societies to innovate. Like they say that everything from iron smelting to the space race, yeah. every major leap forward for humanity has this dark side. Interesting. Because, yeah, you think about something like the space race and it was basically just the Cold War playing out with rockets. Exactly. They even point out that something as mundane as the lawnmower has roots in a war machine designed by Leonardo da Vinci. You're kidding. Okay, so humanity is basically a bunch of pressure cookers. The worse things get, the faster we innovate. But yeah. what does that mean for a world without war? Right. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Like, what happens to all of this, to the economy, to political power, to social cohesion, to scientific progress if we actually manage to achieve lasting peace. So what do they propose we do? What happens to all the money we spend on weapons and armies, for example? They toss around some ideas, like shifting those resources to things like massive social programs, maybe a global effort to combat climate change. They even suggest something like open-ended space exploration. So basically, Finding another way to dump huge amounts of resources into something that doesn't have an immediate tangible return. Pretty much. Although they do admit that it's debatable whether any of that would actually be enough to, yeah. you know, sustain things. And what about the political side of things? If countries aren't constantly trying to one-up each other militarily? Well, one suggestion is a global police force. Kind of like a UN on steroids, I guess. To keep everyone in line. But wouldn't that be incredibly difficult to manage? They admit it would be. And on top of that, it could just end up being, you know, another form of militarization just with different branding. Just like trying to put out a fire with more fire. Right. The report highlights this fundamental paradox at the heart of it all, which is mm -hmm. how do you enforce peace without resorting to the same tools that create war in the first place? Hmm. Good point. So what else? Do they have any less drastic solutions uh not really in fact yeah. when it comes to social unrest they get even more out there because remember their argument is that conflict actually helps to channel aggression that it creates a certain amount of order right right the whole blood games thing okay so walk me through how that's supposed to work in a peaceful society because it sounds <laughs> pretty dystopian well it's like if we aren't channeling aggression through things like you know actual wars right then they suggest we need to find some other outlet for it. Hence the blood games. OK, so walk me through how that's supposed to work. Well, they're talking about creating these uh, artificial conflicts. Yeah. Competitions with real stakes designed to tap into those, you know, primal instincts. OK, so less Hunger Games, more, I don't know, like Extreme Olympics or something. Yeah, something like that, though they're pretty vague on the specifics. I mean, it's not like they're actually suggesting we start gladiatorial combat again. I hope not. But still, the idea that we need a certain amount of controlled violence just to function as a society, that's a pretty bleak outlook on human nature, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely not the most optimistic take. But remember, they're not saying it's good. They're just saying that it might be necessary. Necessary for what, though? That's what gets me. Necessary to prevent something even worse. Or necessary because we're just hardwired for conflict. That's the question, isn't it? And honestly, I don't think the report has an answer, or at least not a clear one. They're just putting it out there. This idea that a truly peaceful society might require a fundamental shift in, in how we view ourselves, how we see our place in the world. It might not even be possible without it. So we've talked about the economic side of things, the political side, even touched on the sociological aspects. But what about like yeah. human ingenuity? You mentioned earlier that the report credits war as a driver of progress. Oh, yeah. And that's another area where things get, well, even more unsettling. Yeah. Because they basically suggest that without the uh, impetus of conflict, we might actually see a decline in things like scientific advancements, cultural innovation. Well, it's like a trade-off. Peace for stagnation. That's one way to look at it, I guess. Yeah. But it's important to remember this whole report, they're not actually advocating for war. No, definitely not. They're just... You know, trying to be as objective as possible, trying to look at all the angles. What are the potential the challenges, right? The trade-offs that nobody really wants to talk about. 
Well, they certainly achieved that much. I mean, this whole report has been one thought-provoking challenge after another. Right. It's like they're holding a mirror up to society and saying, this is you, what are you going to do about it? And I think more than anything, that's the point of this whole thing, right? It's not about easy answers. It's about having the conversation, yeah. even if it's an uncomfortable one. Absolutely. It really does make you question what you think you know about, well, everything. Peace, conflict, how the world works. And honestly, I think that's incredibly valuable, even if you don't agree with their conclusions, just to, you know, take a step back and look at things from a different perspective. It's given us all a lot to think about, that's for sure.